Right, so splits between the Israeli military and Netanyahu's diktat are seeing the two clash. And a government whose orders cannot be carried out or refusal to carry them out is a government no longer in authority. You have to wonder as this story continues to evolve if we're reaching the point where Netanyahu's government may soon collapse under the weight of its own authoritarianism and failure. The voice of reality here, I won't say voice of reason, because the guy making the IDF's position clear has been one of the biggest propagandists going since the events of October 7th. The guy that this channel likes to refer to as Mr. Pointy, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, so called for his penchant to pointing to evidence of Hamas plotting when things later become apparent that what he was pointing to was anything but what he was saying it was. But he is now the guy speaking out against Netanyahu in terms and is total victory diktat. His directive that Gaza must not be left with anyone from a mass still functional because even Mr. Pointy knows this is not achievable. But with the IDF now speaking out against the doctrine and nonsense of Netanyahu's regime and its demands, are we on the way to them reaching the point of no longer following orders, no longer prepared to waste lives pointlessly for little more than keeping Netanyahu himself in power? And are we therefore finally seeing the beginning of the end of this Israeli regime? Right, so nation-state splits, they don't usually come much bigger than when government and the military no longer see eye to eye, do they? We've seen enough military coups over the years to know how that one pans out. And though I'm certainly not suggesting that that is where the Israeli Defence Force is at right now, but the IDF and Netanyahu's regime are very much not on the same page anymore, and having raised Gaza north to south, with just Rafa remaining, itself having been under cons consistent attacks for weeks, Famine ongoing as aid is still being prevented from getting through. And in no small part is this now due to a new problem being seen in Gaza, where there is now no longer any form of law and order. Where before Hamas policed the Strip, such has been the decimation of those forces, the government of Gaza, as Hamas were, that any aid getting through is now being targeted by armed gangs of thugs. Not only that, though, but Hamas have proven that unlike most of the Gaza populace, they are not solely holed up in Rafa, but are popping up in places the IEF believed it had cleared such as the issue for the IDF and their chief spokesperson, Mr. Pointy, Daniel Hagari, who has compared Netanyahu's demand for total victory to saying the Israeli military were capable of completely destroying Hamas and telling the Israeli people that this could be done was akin to throwing sand in their eyes. They cannot eliminate Hamas, and therefore on the basis of the demands put upon them by Netanyahu and his hard-right coalition government of madmen, Israel have already lost really shouldn't be news to anyone when you consider that eliminating Hamas was only one of their supposed objectives. Freeing the hostages was supposed to be one objective, one equally important objective. Far more of them have died due in no small part to Israeli attacks than they have ever rescued. And given the allegations that Hannibal directives were enforced on the night of October 7th, the sanctioned killing of their own people to stop them being taken hostage by Hamas, why anyone, especially the people of Israel, should believe getting the hostages out was ever a priority of the Netanyahu government is beyond me. It clearly never has been. But of course we know governments propagandise. So perhaps it is unfair of me to make such an assumption. We know what our own press is like in this country after all. However, the massive protests in Israel show large people, uh, large numbers of people there are very much aware of the goings on. But look at what the IDF and Shin Bet, the security force, aided and abetted by their allies, US, UK, whoever, throughout their actions have achieved in trying to eliminate Hamas. We've seen churches destroyed, schools gone, mosques, hospitals bombed, 37,000 people killed and counting, many more than that maimed with life-changing injuries. They've captured people, they have tortured people, they've targeted aid convoys, they've even pretended to be aid workers themselves in order to mount more attacks on innocent people in refugee camps, people who came out shot down desperate for food, caught in the middle of a conflict between Israel and Hamas that they had no part of, that they were innocent of. Even as Israel told the world there were no innocent people in Gaza, which of course was a lie. Israel has found itself boycotted by people around the world as a result. Has Hezbollah raining down fire on them because of what they have done in Gaza? Has Islamic resistance in Iraq attacking their port cities such as Haifa? Has allegations of war crimes having been made against them by the International Court of Justice have had their economy and trade stymied and blockaded by the Houthis in Yemen? There could be arrest warrants coming from the International Criminal Court. That is what Israel, its government and the IDF have actually achieved by their own actions. But most of all, they've opened the eyes of the world to the Israeli occupation of 
Palestine, to their apartheid, to their abuses, and that that's a box that they'll, they'll never be able to close again. Here's an excerpt from Israeli news outlet Haaretz, outlining Mr. Pointy's position, which he reiterated after Netanyahu publicly rebuked the IDF, reminding them of their obligations to Israel, is what he said, but, you know, we all kind of know it's him he's talking about. Responding to Netanyahu, the IDF spokesperson released another statement saying that the army is committed to achieving the war's goals as defined by the cabinet. Hamas is an idea. Hamas is a political party. It is rooted in the hearts of people. Whoever thinks we can eliminate Hamas is mistaken, Hagari continued. Hamas is the Muslim Brotherhood. It's been around for many, many years. What can be done is to develop something else to replace it. Something that will make the population realise that someone else is distributing the food. Someone else is taking care of public services. To really weaken Hamas, this is the way, Hagari added. Military means cannot remove Hamas. They need to be out-competed. There needs to be a diplomatic solution where another government, in effect, can be installed in Gaza, is how I interpret his viewpoint here. That can't possibly, of course, be Israel or anything Israeli instigated, though because of how Israel has mistreated these people for decades, keeping them in what is basically the largest concentration camp on the planet. But there can be no military success at the end of the day, is the gist of that argument. But of course, Netanyahu's position as Prime Minister of Israel depends on there being a military success. And this is the, this is the crux. This is why they're butting heads. Because his far-right coalition partners will not countenance peace, will not even countenance the people of Gaza being allowed to remain in Gaza, let alone Hamas, since they want the Gaza Strip for Israeli settlers. And as much as Netanyahu denies that, the likes of Smotrich and Ben Gavir are quite open about that. And this is also something the global community won't accept, something even the US and UK Israeli partners and others around the world say they wouldn't accept. But in point of fact, have done little to imply they wouldn't just keep rolling over to excuse Israel, no matter what they do. And as far as the UK particularly is concerned, with the Israel lobby effectively owning Keir Starmer's backside, a change to a Labour government running the UK will likely only see that support increase in its vociferousness. Why else have we seen ceasefire deal after ceasefire deal fail in the Middle East? Because Netanyahu simply cannot and will not agree to one. He can't afford to agree to one. And now he has the added headache of even his own military criticising him. And when it is their lives on the line, the people under the command of Agari and others, and others paying the ultimate price for Netanyahu's power trip, he's never on the front line, and determination to remain Prime Minister, whatever the cost, measured in f money, measured in lives, notably the IDF's lives, should we actually be surprised that as awful as the IDF are, and their conduct has been, that even they have limits when it comes to their own people pointlessly losing their lives? In effect, Higari is echoing the sentiment of the National Uni Par Unity Party leader, Benny Gantz, who quit Netanyahu's coalition the other day, having given him three weeks to come up with a plan for after the conflict in Gaza ends. There is no end game, though, because the only end game Netanyahu will accept, can accept, can afford to accept in order to keep his coalition together, keep himself in power, is a military one, completely destroying Hamas. That is impossible to deliver will not end things either. Where Gantz wanted some kind of a diplomatic exit strategy to all of this, and left because none was forthcoming, now the IDF itself is having those same conversations. They cannot eliminate Hamas. They are saying it openly now. They don't want to see the lives of their troops wasted in this vain attempt. Yet for Netanyahu's selfish wants and desires and his lust for power, there seems to be a price that will continue to be worth paying as far as he is concerned. He's becoming increasingly isolated, though, it would appear. I mean, Netanyahu's fellow potential ICC arrest warrant awaitee and Defence Minister Yoav Gallant has also spoken out now. He called Netanyahu out last month for not having a clear post-war plan for governance of Gaza. Possibly in a bit of a show of saving one's own skin there, maybe. But he's not alone in saying that sort of thing either. Israel's own uh, military chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, has echoed those sentiments, say, allegedly being behind media leaks that were criticising the government for a lack of political solutions to end the war. I would hope privately, even if they aren't so much saying it publicly yet, that these people, awful as they are for the role they've played these last nine months in their own right, know that the reason for there being no political solution, no end game, no final plan for governance, is because Netanyahu cannot keep his coalition together should he provide one.
I'm not convinced he would want one if he wasn't beholden to the far right either, though. His response to all of this has been to say to the IDF that Israel has an army, the army does not have a country, which really is peak arrogance, and would, I imagine, encourage any well, mutinous talk that might be going on behind IDF closed doors to get a bit louder, maybe. Know your place is effectively the message he conveyed there, but Netanyahu should know his place too, because he isn't Israel. And if he and the likes of Smotrich and Ben Gavir are seen by their own forces more and more as the obstacle to that diplomatic and political end to matters in Gaza, well, we've seen militaries topple governments before elsewhere, haven't we? They might end up discovering how much they aren't Israel and how much the army might well put Israel itself first if something doesn't shift amongst the political narratives and frankly I just can't see it happening because it just doesn't appear to be any limit to how far Netanyahu will go to suit himself which ultimately at this point I think is what all of this now boils down to tearing at the fabric of what passes for Netanyahu's leadership and also the reputations and motivations of Israel's security forces too is another leak this one having been fed to the Israeli media demonstrating not only did Israel know the events of October 7th were coming but also in how much detail they knew, and that this was known about at least three weeks ahead of time, begging the question of why it was allowed to happen in which case. A whole lot of explaining is needed, and this video recommendation here will give you the details of that story, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.